Hi, welcome. I'm Danny Girl Art, a CZT, and today I am going to be working with the Tangles Huggins and Nazepal. And I'm going to work on one of these super cute bijou tiles, but you can use any size tile you would like to work with today. And we're going to begin with Huggins. <clears throat> so Huggins, if it's formed in a um, line in a row, uh, it, this will be just regular Huggins. But if we take our circles and we start off and displace them and stagger them a little bit, we're going to call it crazy Huggins. And please feel free to change and adapt what I'm doing and whatever your pen and heart are calling for, you take that path instead. So you can use either a Micron PN or a O1. Today I'm in the mood to use a PN. <clears throat> and I'm going to start with some circles, some orbs, excuse me, some orbs. So I'm going to put an orb here. And I'm going to work out a little bit on the diagonal. Put one there. They're not all the same size, that's fine. Just enjoy the process. And I have room for another set. I'm going to put some here. All right, so maybe I'll add some more, we'll see. So I'm going to redefine this orb and I'm going to connect it to the one below it. So I'm going to go over what's there, come at a curve and come around. For those of you that <clears throat> had grew up with phones that you would pick up, they remind me of um, what we would have in our homes, the shape of a phone. And I'm going to mirror this on the opposite side. On the next one, I'm going to move in the opposite direction. So here we're going counterclockwise. This time I'm going to go, excuse me, clockwise. This time we're gonna go counterclockwise. And I'll do the mirror on this side. So I'm gonna imagine that there are some other orbs down at the bottom of um, my table and I'm just going to come around now and have this go off of my tile like so. And for me, it's best for me to rotate it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're switching back and forth, curving in, curving out, in, out when we do this. So let's go to the inside of this now. So I am going to close off some of these spaces. So I'm going to come into this circle now, again, redefining, coming, curving up and coming back down to the other orb. And again, a mirror image. And I'll continue down. Like so. Maybe I want to add another orb somewhere else. And if you would like to do that, please feel free to do so. <clears throat> I'm going to add some auras now. So I'm going to go inside here and I'm going to aura this line. And maybe you don't have enough space. Maybe yours is very narrow and you want to do some other type of pattern inside of here. And I invite you to do that if you would like to. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other ones. And notice how I'm always turning my tile, making it comfortable for my hands to move around my tile. All right, that's pretty. And <clears throat> I'm going to go in and add just some little lines inside of that space I've just created from making the aura. Maybe you want to fill them in solid.
So I like to have some contrast in my tiles. And what I mean by that, a good variety between dark and lights. <clears throat> so right now I have a lot of white areas. Well, that's gonna change and develop. I would say this striping part that I'm doing right now is a medium scale, but I like to have contrast, difference between light and dark. So I'm going to show some of that inside of these orbs and I'm gonna leave a little reflection, a little circle inside, but then I'm going to go in and I'm going to ink in each of these. And you could do it completely solid if you wanted to. No rhyme or reason where I'm putting my little highlight. And a great little trick, if you lose your highlight, you could take a jelly roll and you could go in at the end once the black ink is dry. And you could just add a little white dot for your glare because sometimes we do fill it in by accident. So there's my Huggins and I'll do some shading on it after um, to give it some depth. And if you wanna add anything else to it, please do. So we're going to move to Nizepel next. And <clears throat> both of the tangles we're using today are headquarter tangles. And again, if we're gonna be starting with a grid for Nizepel and if we kept our grid with straight lines, it would be Nizepel. But if we made <clears throat> crooked or diagonal lines, it would be crazy Nizepel. So feel free to do whatever you would like. So I'm going to just start here and I'm going to draw a line and halaba, draw behind when I bump into my Huggins. And I'm gonna make a pretty wide grid, like so. And this side needs another line. All right, so I have lines running in one direction. And then I'm going to go in the other direction, always halibuying, drawing behind when I hit into that Huggins. <clears throat> okay, so from here, I'm going to add in each of these boxes, diagonal lines going in both directions so that I'm creating an X. And I'm treating each square separately and not just running another diagonal line through because my lines are not going to be perfectly straight. So it may not work that they can come perfectly through. And that's fine. And if you don't want, if you only wanna go in one direction in some of the boxes, that's completely fine as well. So I've added some lines and now this fun, fun part, I love this, this tangle, it's just so beautiful. So I'm going to make sure you don't skip this step. I'm going to go over, I'm gonna look at these as triangles. I'm gonna redefine the line that's there. When I get to the corner, I'm going to curve redefine, hit a corner curve, redefine like so. So all the corners are being curved and I'm going back over the lines that I've created. And again, you're gonna have to kind of imagine what's going on when you have something that's halibut or if it's going off of your tile and you're gonna to start to get this beautiful floral look. I just love it. Or sometimes uh, I even think of like a stone pathway, whatever, whatever it may be. I really love how it works out. So you can see these spaces that are being formed also. If you'd like, you could leave them like that or you could um, go in and you could fill those in and um, have another contrast area, another darker area. But I think I'm gonna leave mine as is and I'm going to focus on um, adding more contrast when I get up to my shading. So go in and finish your Nazapple. 
So let's do some shading. I'm going to start um, around the Huggins on top of the, the Zeppel. And I'm going to go in and I really like high contrast shading. So don't be scared to go dark with this. Or if you are nervous, that's fine. Then what you can do is start with your graphite and go in and then work it up in layers because so, you can always make something darker. So you can go back in if you don't feel like you did it dark enough and add another layer of pencil. And notice how my edges are kind of messy. I feel like that really helps with blending this out with my tortillon. So I'm picking up my tortillon now and in circular motions, I am going around this, just blending out that graphite. Um, I still always want to have white on my tile, so I don't want everything to turn gray. So be careful how far you blend it out. But what a difference already that Huggins is really starting to pop out. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, my edges are not perfectly neat. Going all the way around. Moving to my tortillon again, little motions. And if you are pressing super hard, then go back in and add more graphite. You shouldn't really have to do a ton of work with moving this graphite around. All right, that looks nice. Now we could do a couple things. We could, I see I missed the line. We could go in and shade each of the inside parts of the Nazepal. I'm gonna think about it for a minute and move to my Huggins. And to me, this one looks like it's on top. So where it's curving in below it, on the Huggins below, I'm going to add some graphite on both sides. Blend it out. Wow, that looks great. And I think I might just add, with just my dirty tortillon, just add a little triangular shadow in these white spots here. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> and this side also needs some graphite. Another curving in one from the piece of the Huggins that is going off of our tile. Nice, and make sure you leave some white in the middle. We want it to go from dark to gray to white. And again, I'm going to add a little something here because it's just a little too white for my, my style. Okay, so we could do a um, shadow around the border, or if you'd like, you could shade each one of these um, individually. And I'm gonna show you both ways on my tile, but you might just wanna pick one. So you can go in and add little curves like so. And I'm not pressing quite as hard with this. So that looks nice. We can even, if your tortillon's really dirty, just go in with the tortillon like so. Um, sometimes I like to take the edge of my pencil and just go around the border. You don't have to do all of this. I just want to give you the opportunity to choose what you think will be good for you. And if you're working on a larger tile than a bijou, you're going to have more surface area to play around with this. So maybe your grid was bigger, your spaces are larger. <clears throat> I go through phases and I'm just, I love these little bijous recently especially if I don't have a ton of time, if I just want to do a tile that's not going to take quite as long and be able to finish it in one sitting, the bijoux really are great for that. All right, how cute is that? I love it, playing around with that. So just turn your tile around, appreciate it. Add, I'm gonna pick up an 01 and I'm going to add my chop here and sign the back 
And I hope you had fun with Huggins and the Zeppel. And I look forward to seeing you again.